Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGAG Empress. Got to get buddy back for the YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house. So check this out, man. We have a lot of stuff to talk about today. We have a lot of stuff to cover, man. We had a great night of boxing uh, yesterday, Saturday, June 15th, man. You know, um, we're going to talk about the Tank versus Frank Martin card. Starting off with, uh, we had some upsets, you know what I'm saying? Starting off with um, uh, the Carlos Adama, Carlos Adamas and Terrell, uh, I don't know if you pronounce it as Goucher or Guasha. You know, um, that, that went typically, uh, that, that, that went basically as we expected. You know, Carlos Adamas came out with the win. I, I was hoping for a little more impressive showing, um, but Terrell Goucher is a very tough fighter, so I'm not mad at that, man. Carlos Adamas handled, Adamas handled, handled business, you know. Um, then we had, uh, next up, we had Alberto Puello versus Gary Antoine Russell, man. That was an upset, man. You know, a lot of people thought that uh, Alberto Puello had a good chance, and I thought so too. I thought he was going to be a good fighter, but I didn't expect him to be... Uh, so sharp with his punches, man, and he outpointed Gary Antoine Russell. I thought Antoine Russell kind of got caught up into into trying to knock him out and keep that um seventeen uh, that 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 hundred percent KO ratio going. You know, he was seventeen wins, seventeen knockouts. Um, but yeah, he took his first loss. I thought it was a. I, I personally thought that uh, Gary Antoine Russell did enough to win, but like I said, he got caught up trying. It seemed seemingly like he was trying to knock him out and get him out of there. You know what I'm saying? Because he did he did predict a ninth round stoppage um, uh, of Alberto Puello. <laughs> That's the plan. That's the plan. I'm not going to go in there looking for it, though. I'm going to let it come. Just be sharp. See it going. Round nine, I could possibly get him up out of it. But he didn't was it wasn't able to fulfill that and I feel like he just got personally I just feel like he got caught up trying to trying to fulfill that prophecy if you will and he ended up losing the fight but it was a close fight and I don't mind Alberto Puello winning because in my opinion could have went either way so shout out to Alberto Puello but now let's get to David Benavidez man his first fight his debut at light heavyweight man he um he was fighting against Alexander Vazdik the Ukrainian fighter man that was a great fight you know I thought it was, I thought David Benavidez won eight rounds to four. I know that sounds like a large disparity, but it was a closer fight than that, you know, because I thought that a lot of the rounds could have went either way. But I thought that um, the majority of the rounds, David Benavidez, even though he won slightly, he still won them, man. Alexander Vazic, to me, he was very impressive. He came through, was fighting his heart out, man. He was tougher than I thought, um, you know, not, be, not not tougher than I remember, because I remember him as a great fighter. You know, he has a win over Adonis Superman Stevenson. You know, he beat him and, um, you know, he suffered brain damage after that, man. Shout out to Adonis Stevenson, man. Big salute. And then um, he also was beating Artur Benavidez, which was, which was his only loss prior to David Benavidez. You know, that was his only loss, and he was winning that fight up until he got knocked out so alexander vazic is a great fighter is he though a tough fighter yeah but you know having the having a uh, long hiatus uh after losing the better bf and coming back and winning three in a row but they were against uh, relatively unknown fighters you know i wasn't expecting i wasn't sure how much vazic had left in the tank but man i'm telling you bro vazic that vazic that david benavides beat last night he beats a lot of people man he beats a whole lot of people man so shout out to alexander vazic i was very impressed with his with this fight he gave me took a lot of punches you know and even david benavides was like man that guy could take a punch <laughs> You know, and um, I thought personally that uh, David Benavidez, while he while he did win and he looked good, um, I thought he looked a little. I don't want to say small because you know physically he's he's that size, but you know he looked a little. He looked a little soggy at that weight, you know. He didn't really look like compared to Vazic, they looked the same size, but of course Vazic looked more muscular, more, more, more lean, and more had more muscle, you know. Benavidez, in my opinion, he looked a little, little less defined, you know. A monster we used to see him being big and imposing. <laughs> I don't feel like he was big and imposing that night. Granted, he did move up, but, you know, I thought that weight would carry. And I thought it did carry, but I'm not sure if he should stay at light heavyweight. But if he does, I think he can. I think he's capable, but I think he needs to make a decision instead of saying, like, you know, I could go back down to 168 or I could uh, go in between. I feel like he needs to pick a weight division and just commit. I know a lot of it's dependent on old sentiment. If he come closer, I'm, I, I, I fuck him. Huh? Then Canelo, you know, but I think he should just make a choice for himself and either commit to 175 or commit to 168. But that in-between, I feel like might get him in trouble, especially when you consider him potentially going up against Bivol or Beterbiev. I don't think that bodes well for him. I don't think he beats either one of them, you know, the winner or the loser. You know what I'm saying? Now let's get to the meat and potatoes uh, take versus Frank, man. Frank Martin, bro. Frank Martin, man. Frank the Ghost Martin, bro. My Big salute to Frank Ghost Martin. Big salute, man. He said at the post- uh, presser after he lost, man. He said that he feels like he let people down. He lost a lot of fans. What's up, everybody, man? I, I you know, I, I let my people down. What? Yeah, you know, that's a blessing. You know, like, if, you know, I probably lost some fans. You know, it is what it is. You know? It's my brother. 
you didn't lose any fans on this side. You didn't lose any fans that have any common sense. And the people that you lost, you're supposed to lose them anyway. A lot of people ain't supposed to come with us on this journey. You know what I'm talking about? So you you put on a hell of a show. You know, um, I, I think you have nothing to hold your head down about. Of course, you're an undefeated warrior, so you don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. And, you know, it's, it's going to hurt for a while. But, bro. That, that, that Frank Martin put on a hell of a show, you know, and I, I was so impressed because, you know, it's so funny. I did not put money on this, but I called it eighth round stoppage. But I said that Frank Martin was going to win. I thought Frank Martin was going to win the uh, uh, four or five rounds, you know, and I was slightly off. You know, Frank Martin definitely won the first three rounds. I thought the fourth round was debatable, but I, get, I leaned towards Tank in the close round. Um, but Frank Martin, man, he put on a show, man. He did everything I thought he was going to do. He put on a boxing clinic. You know, he, um, he, 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 oh man, there's mosquitoes out here. It's just raining. Sorry about that. He put on, he, he was very evasive, very elusive. You know, he was out boxing, out pointing Tank, you know, keeping his distance, um, and not getting trapped in the corner against the ropes, man. He did his thing, man. I was very impressed with Frank Martin, how he executed his game plan. But my, the reason why I called it and eighth is because I was like, man, I don't think Frank Martin is going to be able to sustain this, you know, and, and sure enough, I was right. You know, Tank was just going to eventually break him down, you know, so those that um, don't give Frank Martin his credit, you're crazy, Frank Martin. I don't think, I think Frank Martin is going to be a problem at the 135 division. I'm telling you, man, outside of Shakur and outside of Tank, I think a lot of people are going to struggle to beat them, especially if Frank Martin does what I think he's going to do, like a warrior, like a fighter does, you know what I'm saying, heart of a lion. I think he's going to get better. I think he's going to come back and improve after this loss. And if he does, then he's going to be a problem. I'm telling you, Frank, the Ghost Martin is going to be a problem. He's already a problem. And this goes leads me to Tank. Javante Tank Davis, man, this dude is so impressive, man. Yeah. Y'all got to start giving this man his credit, man. This dude is easily one of the best fighters in, 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 in boxing today. He has been for a while. Shout out to Teddy Atlas for always, for always um, um, acknowledging his greatness. He's much more than what a lot of people thought he was. He's a complete son of a gun. And not just physically. And technically, but mentally. Tank is a beast, man. Just because he wins in, 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 in decisive fashion, in explosive fashion, impressive fashion, y'all got to stop discrediting his opponents. Frank Martin's a great fighter. Esau Pippa Gruz is a great fighter. He's a champion right now. Uh, Mario Barros is a great fighter. He's a he's a champion or interim champion at 147. He has he posed the Pedraza was an undefeated champion when, when Tank beat him. Y'all got to stop discrediting this man, man. Tank is a beast. He's a monster. <laughs> Just because somebody makes something look easy doesn't mean it was easy. He got touched up by Frank Martin. I was very impressed by Frank Martin. You know, you look at, look at Tank's face. So, Damn. I'm sorry. Um, you know, that, that, that was indicative of Frank Martin getting to him, man. So shout out to Frank Martin. Frank Martin has nothing to hold his head down about. You know, he started boxing late. Frank start, uh, Tank started boxing as a JIT. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, just, it's just different levels to it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the, a lot of those levels, a lot of the ascension through the levels comes with experience. You know what I'm saying? So um, to get to where you're going, it's, it's heavily dependent on where you've been. You know what I'm saying? And Tank has been through it for a long time. So so big shout out to Calvin Ford, Coach Calvin Ford and Coach Kenny Ellis, man. I thought I thought Frank Martin all the way through, man. He, he handled himself like a consummate professional. He, he, he kept his composure throughout the fight. You know, he just got caught, like he said, man. He just got caught, and that's exactly what happened, man. He has nothing to hang his head down about, man. Shout out to Frank Martin. And I look forward to seeing Frank the Ghost Martin even more. I was already a fan. I'm a bigger fan now, man. Big salute to them and the, the Aero Spence team, man. But, yeah, man, that's, that's how it went, man. Tank held it down. They're saying they want to see Tank versus Loman next, Tank versus Core next. I think Tank beats them all. Um, so I, I look forward to that. But, yeah, man, big salute to Frank Martin, man. Nothing to hold your head down about, man. The Ghost going to keep coming back man i think he's gonna get better man he's gonna be even more of a problem you know what i'm talking about so big salute to y'all appreciate y'all coming through as always man don't forget to like the video as well and more importantly man remember with god we do anything without god we're nothing the doctor's out peace from the hood to college both worlds they had to meet six degrees between us so cold we're about to freeze but we're florida boys hot takes we bring the heat we're moving the culture the engineers to the streets